In this video, we're going to take a look at coterminal angles and arc length. So coterminal angles are angles that are in standard position, and they have the same terminal arm. That means that they always end in the same position. Uh, they may be measured in degrees or radians, and because it's having the same terminal arm, that means we need to rotate 360 degrees. So we can find the coterminal angle by adding or subtracting 360, but for in radians, that would be considered to be 2 pi radians. So let's take a look at an example. So for these two angles, what I want you to do is to determine one positive and one negative angle that's coterminal with it. So to understand where this is, 110 degrees, um, this is 0 and 90, so 110 would be in the second quadrant, <coughs> excuse me, and this is where 110 degrees would be. So to find the coterminal angle, we would have to go reach it, and then pass it to go all around and then get back to the same terminal arm. So when we do this, we are adding actually 360 degrees to what we had before. So this gives us 470 degrees. Now, if I want a negative coterminal angle, let me erase this, we would start over here this time, and we would have this angle here. Now we actually have to start from back here so we actually can figure out that this is 110 already but then we're going to go backwards 360 degrees which is the same as saying we're going to subtract 360 degrees and when we do this we get negative 250 degrees. We can also do this in radians so let's take a look at what this would look like in radians. So 4 pi over 3 this is 0, remember? This is pi. And if we use the same denominator, this would be 3 pi over 3, which means that 4 pi over 3 must be over here. So, similarly, to get a coterminal angle, I need to start here, go all the way around, and then back. So, I'm reaching 4 pi over 3, and then I have to add another 2 pi this time to go all around. So adding 2 pi is actually the same as adding 6 pi over 3. And so this gives us 10 pi over 3. And this is will be in radians. Now if we want to get the value a negative coterminal angle, let's erase this and marking, we're going to go in the opposite direction. Now to start here, we would figure out what this negative is, but we probably want to actually start here at 4 pi over 3, and then go all the way around and subtract this time. Because we're going in the negative, we're going to subtract 2 pi, or subtract 6 pi over 3. So this time we get negative 2 pi over 3. Alright, so let's take a look at what coterminal angles look like, um, generally, because we can actually keep adding 360 or keep subtracting. 360 or 2 pi. So if we keep doing this, um, this will give us lots of full rotations. Um, we can write in an infinite number. So if the angle is in degrees, the angles can be obtained by adding or subtracting 360 degrees. Now because we can add lots of them, we can add once around, twice around, three times around, four times around, etc. We can say this is 360 degrees times n, depending on how many times we want to rotate. n is going to be a natural number, meaning that it's 1 and higher. If the angle is in radians, the coterminal angle can be obtained by adding 2 pi this time for every full rotation that we do. And again, we also have times n, because we can have 2 pi, we can rotate 2 2 pi's, or 3 2 pi's, or 4 2 pi's, and so on. So therefore, angles that are coterminal with any angle, theta, can be described using the expression theta plus or minus 360 degrees n, or theta plus or minus 2 pi n if we're in radians. And remember that n represents the number of full rotations. 
from the angle theta, which is in the standard position already. So let's take a look at one example. So let's say that I have negative 500 degrees and I want to find other coterminal angles that satisfy. So this would be, I'm going to give you um, a range from negative 720 degrees to 720 degrees. So we can say that negative 500 plus or minus 360 degrees n will give us all the angles that we want. Now the only ones that we want, however, are between negative 720 and 720. So I'm going to start with negative 500 and I'm going to add 360 times 1. When I do that, I get negative 140. If I go negative 500 and I add 360 degrees times 2, I now get 220 degrees. If I add negative 500 plus 360 degrees times 3, I'm going to get 580 degrees. Now I can also subtract, but you'll notice that if I go negative 500 minus 360 degrees times 1, I'm going to get negative 860. And that's already too big or very, very negative, and it's too small uh, to fit into this range. So we actually don't need this one. All right, so next we're going to take a look at something called arc length. Um, arc length is trying to find the length of the arc, which is located on the outside part or the circumference of the circle. So consider a circle. Um, let's say that we have a central angle, and that central angle is theta. We're going to say that the radius is r, and then let's say that we're trying to find this arc length, and we'll call that a. So we can set up a proportion to help us find the arc length. So we know that the arc length is proportional to the circumference, which is the whole entire circle. Now, that should be proportional to the angle of the arc length. So the angle of the arc length here is theta. Right now, I'm going to call it the central angle. And the circumference would be in our entire right angle. So I'm going to call that one revolution. Okay, so let's do some substitution. So the arc length in our picture is labeled A. Our circumference, remember, is C equals 2 times pi times R. The central angle in our picture is theta. And we know that to make one rotation is going to be 2 pi. So let's do some simplification. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 pi r so that I can get rid of my fraction here. So I end up with a is equal to theta times r. And this is a little formula that you can use to find the arc length. Now one really important note here is that theta must be in radians. So when you're using the formula, make sure that theta is in radians. All right, so we'll take a look at a couple of examples. Um, so if A represents the length of an arc of a circle uh, with radius R, and it's subtended, meaning that it opens out to a central angle, of um, which is theta, we want to find the missing quantity. So give your answer to the nearest hundredth of a unit. So we're going to use A equals theta times R. And we can see that we already have R, which is 6. Uh, we're trying to find A, so I'm going to leave that as a variable. And then theta is equal to 50 degrees. So we go R, which is radius, times theta, our angle, which is 50. Now because this is in degrees, we need to change it to radians. So if you recall, to change to radians, we need to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. And we can type all of this into our calculator. We notice the zeros cancel off. So if you wanted an exact length, this would be 30 times pi divided by 18, which can reduce to 10 pi. Oh, actually, I can reduce more. I can divide by 6. So this would be 5 pi divided by 3. If I want a decimal answer, which is what it's asking, I would get 11.39 centimeters, because this is measured in centimeters as well. 
Let's take a look at finding a different variable. So a equals r times theta. This time we want to know what theta is. Our r is 5 and our arc length is 13. So 13 equals 5 times theta. Divide both sides by 5 and I have now theta is equal to 13 divided by 5. And that's going to be in radians because I don't have any uh, degree symbol. And if I want to convert, this would be 2.6. You can write radians if you like, but you also don't need to uh, because we can identify that this is theta. Oops, I just realized that I have made a little mistake here. Um, this is not 11.39 centimeters. Let me just erase this. Uh, this should actually be 5.24 centimeters. Sorry about that.